Mulachuk. This is Tommy from Sabaton. You're watching Mulachuk, the only TV you need. Mulachuk. Your career in Sabaton started with The Little Mermaid. Please tell us more about this magical story. So yeah, I was at this party with uh, Joachim, no, with Sabaton back in 2010 and uh, we were, you know, after seeing them live and we were partying and there was a piano there so uh, Joachim was uh, started to play some uh, songs and he played doo -doo 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 and it's like, hey, I know that one on piano so I played it one octave higher and we uh, started to play some uh, Disney songs together uh, mostly that one we played uh, over and over so now I get the connection <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing! Uh, uh, so that, that's how we started and that's how we, we kind of got to know each other like hey you got great taste in music you can play the piano yeah well so do you and so on so we stayed in touch after that What happened that you finally got into the band and joined them to play in the world? Well, back in 2012, they were changing uh, members and they came to think of, uh, of me because they, they, they knew, how, knew who I was and they've, uh, we, you know, we've been to the party together so we, we played the song and, and uh, they've seen me uh, perform on TV and Swedish television and uh, I heard my band so I was like, well this guy maybe could feel he's good on stage, he can play, he can sing. So they called me in 2012, I had a meeting with Per and Joachim. Unfortunately it wasn't the right timing for me. I had some other stuff that I wanted to, uh, you know, uh, try to work out uh, other bands and stuff. Uh, so I declined their kind offer. Uh, yeah. That's a bold move. Yeah, well I mean, uh, at least I had to try. I had an opportunity to tour with my own band. I've been working really hard for it and I really didn't really feel that I want to quit that just because I got a good opportunity. Uh, I mean, if, if um, you know, it's if it's destiny that I will be in this band, then I will be in this band at some point. And then, four years later, hmm. they give me a call and say, hey, Tom, nice to hear from you again. Or, well, ni nice to... Hi, it's me, Pat, I'm calling, so... <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I said, nice to hear from you again. And I said, yeah, well, Tobe is uh, quitting the band. Uh, so he's uh, gonna quit the band in a couple of months and we thought hey let's give you another chance maybe you want to this time and at that point my, the work that I had was going to close down so I was going to be unemployed uh, I already had you know start to search for a new job but I was like dude the timing is perfect of course right. yeah so it worked out it worked out and now here I am Mulacha! You are known as the most famous Swedish number one karaoke singer. How fun or how much fun is it for you to pick songs and cover them? A lot of fun. Yeah. I, 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 I do that. I release a song every Friday because there's so many things, you know, songs I, I want to cover. Uh, it, it's kind of a way for me to be creative. I mean, of course, I write my own stuff for uh, my other band, Majestica, but uh, I really enjoy taking a cover, uh, taking a song, and do it my own style. Uh, yeah. And, you know, sing uh, Disney songs or heavy metal songs, uh, female fronted uh, songs, it really doesn't matter. It, it's a challenge, like I did a Celine Dion cover mm -hmm. and uh, tried, made it my own style, but in the same key. Wow. So that was like a, a challenge, but a, a fun thing to do yeah. as, as well. Can't imagine. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I've been doing Mariah Carey as well. So uh, <laughs> Bonnie, Bonnie Tyler, uh, Spice Girls. All Bex, the good ones. Boys, all, all the good yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> and of course, uh, Samira made and a lot of Gary Moore songs. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's like, I even tried a Taylor Swift song. Okay. Uh, uh, Anti-hero. Yeah. Uh, I, I tried that one because I saw, okay, shit, that's like number one on trending mm. uh, on YouTube for several days now. And it was released like three or four days. Yeah. And I thought, hey, now I have to try to see if this works. So <laughs> I made a cover of that song from the beginning until uh, I had a video done in uh, one day. Okay. Four. 
Yeah, I, that's I, I, insane. Well, I work pretty fast. I mean, yeah. I, I, I hear in here in my head when I listen to the song, I can hear like, oh shit, uh, I can do like that, I can do like that, and mm. do okay, 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 cool. So I do I do the music pretty fast, and then I record the vocals, and uh, then I make the video. Uh, the video was kind of you know I filmed it while I was recording the vocals and some of the guitars, so it was mm. pretty you know fast as well. Uh, but it, it didn't really work as I was as I planned. A lot of people say have been saying like, yeah, that's one of your best covers ever. Mm -hmm. But but still, it didn't get that. Uh, you know, it didn't go viral. Not that way. Okay. Yeah, but then I do total clips of the heart with Bonnie Tyler. Yeah. And it's like ah, uh, maybe not my best cover, but still a cool version. And that one. <laughs> so it's, it's like that's destiny too. Yeah. What's going viral? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Mulatcha. <laughs> If you could cook during the touring, if you were the chef, what mm. would you cook? I would do some minced meat and some pasta, some carbonara, some lasagna, can cannelloni, a lot of Italian stuff. But I would also do a palt, a Swedish dish. It's like a big potato ball. Uh, shredded potato, flour, and you mix it into a ball with some salt and you cook it, uh, you boil it. Take the balls, uh, put it in a boiling water for like 40 minutes, and then you add uh, some bacon to it mm. and some melted butter, and it's oh, it's so good. <laughs> but I, I would do uh, well. I would do some uh, pastry as well. You know, bake some cakes yeah. and uh, cake, uh, you know, cookies and stuff like that. I, I really like to bake. It's, uh, oh. it's yeah. So I do that a lot at home. What's your favorite baking stuff? I like to do cakes. Cakes. Yeah, like decorating them and really? stuff like that. Yeah. That kind of art as well. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, I, I do that. <laughs> nothing, nothing that I, I have uh, shared or anything on social media. It's like, I uh, don't don't feel like I want to do that for for everyone yeah. to see. It's a private passion. Yeah, I mean, it's like uh, I did uh, one of the most the cake I'm most uh, happy about is a cake that I did uh, for my girlfriend on uh, Valentine's Day. It's with a heart shaped with a. Uh, a lot of uh, yeah, it was it was a piece of art. Yeah, know, yeah. I, I think, but I, I just took a picture uh, to save it, but I would never post it because yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, uh, yeah I, I don't know yeah. what to say really. I mean, of course, I I mean I don't mind people knowing that I can do that stuff too as well. But uh, uh, some things I really wanna you know I don't want to show everything. I can do. I think it's important. Yeah, well. yeah. You, you you earn you have the right mm. to some privacy, and unfortunately exactly. in this business, uh, it's like, uh, yeah, sometimes you have to fight mm. to get your some some privacy. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean I've seen people, uh, one person even contacted me saying that she got ripped off. Uh, she paid 700 euros to get uh, a copy of my passport and my bank account number and she came to me saying that she was fooled, uh, tricked, because it's not your passport that I got in the mail. This is a fake one. Holy shit. Yeah, of course it is. And you paid 700 euros for that. It's like, dude, do, can am I allowed to have any privacy at yeah. all? Do you have to know everything about me? That's <laughs> so, horrible. So, yeah. Uh, really. Yeah, it's weird. Mulatcha! If you can choose one of the following dudes, I say, I say dudes now, sorry. Mm, okay. um, and you can talk one day about guitars. Whom would you choose? Joe Bonamassa, uh, Kai Hansen, mm -hmm. or Carl Gustav of Sweden? Carl Gustav of Sweden? Yes. The, do you mean the king? Exactly. Uh, to talk guitars to. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. That, that's a hard one because Joe Bonamassa, he, he's that kind of guy that if I would say something about a guitar, he knows 10 things more about whatever I say. Kai Hansen, I don't really have this impression that he is a big guitar collector. Uh, the King of Sweden, I would go with Kai Hansen. Definitely okay. yeah. Kai Hansen. Kai Hansen. Yes, of course. <laughs> so why? Because uh, he, he, I mean, he's the the father of power metal, my favorite kind of music. And uh, to talk guitars with him, 
uh, seems like a good idea because he, uh, uh, I mean, of course, I, I believe that he knows a lot about guitars. But I, I think compared to Joao Banamassa, who is a real guitar nerd in a, in a positive way, of course, of course. Uh, I, I feel that I could have a more of a normal conversation with Kai Hansen. Um, yeah, I don't know, maybe because we, we play the same kind of music, so we have some more in common there. When you joined Sabaton, mm -hmm. you directly gave up your apartment because of heavy touring. Yes, yes, that is true. I put all my stuff in a in a storage. I, I still have it actually, mm -hmm. um, and some of the stuff I kept with my family, like uh, things that I don't really don't want to be stolen or uh, fragile stuff. I yeah. I still keep with my family in my hometown, and uh, I was without an apartment for almost a year. Because it was so much touring and the rent was, you know, 500 euros a month, I would never be home, and it just felt like I would waste money. Mm. So why pay 500 euros just to have a place where I keep my stuff when I can pay uh, 50 euros a month yeah. to to have it, the place, the stuff all there? Uh, and then it's like yeah, we have one week off, okay. How about I stay in Stockholm that week and visit some friends there, go away for another four weeks and then there's Christmas, I go visit my mom and then I go visit my dad and uh, then we start a two and a half month uh, tour and then I you know spend some time with uh, some friends every here and there and then one week later we go to America uh, and then <laughs> I visit some more friends before we started the festival summer and then I got myself an apartment in Falun in Sweden. So almost a yeah. year without, uh, you know. And, and then, uh, of course, my, my mom took care of my mail. Yeah, okay. So I sent all, got all my mail sent there so she could, you know, bills and stuff like that. Quite incredible to imagine. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I saved a lot of money, yeah, of course. Of course. And makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and since I wasn't away, uh, since I wasn't home, uh, so much during that time we only had like a week off and then away for one and a half months and then one week off and so on I felt I can take this time to go and visit friends and family that I don't usually go and see Sure, sure. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So a few words um, to the legacies of Gary Moore and Randy Randy Rhodes. You know what I mean. Yeah. Please, just a few words. Huh? A few words about Gary Moore and Randy Rhodes. Uh, <clears throat> well, Gary Moore, uh, I mean, if it wasn't for him, I would probably not play guitar. I don't know. But uh, when I saw him playing, then at the age of nine, I felt, okay, this is what at I'm going to do. Nine. Yes. Okay. Wow. And I had the same goal ever since. It's like, I want to become a, a rock star guitar player. I want to be able to play guitar like Gary Moore. And that has been my goal since the age of nine. And uh, so to Gary, I want to thank you so much for, for doing this. Uh, I mean, I don't know. It, it, he's meant so much to me in my life. It's like he's been a, a family member uh, almost. At one point, well, I mean, for, for a couple of years when I, was, uh, when I was younger, I actually thought my dad was Gary Moore because they kind of looked the same. When Gary was in his 40s and my dad was in his 40s, they had this same appearance in the, in the face. Uh -huh. uh, so they were very similar. So I actually thought it was him. So when he died uh, on uh, 6th of February 2011, mm -hmm. I was so devastated. It felt wow. like, you know, you know, like an uncle had died. Yeah. That, that's how it felt. It was really deep. Yeah, yeah it was very, very sad. Yeah. But I still play Gary Moore every day and uh, I'm gonna release a, another Gary Moore song this coming Friday oh, really? on really? YouTube, so yeah. Mola Jack. Randy Rhodes, <clears throat> I mean, of course, my first, you know, real electric guitar that I got uh, what that I paid with money of my own was actually a Jackson Randy Rhodes. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. This so, yeah, and that was like, what is a Randy Rhodes? 
I thought it was, you know, roads. Uh, yeah. That Randy, that was like a, something about the road. But no, it was actually a guy called Randy Rhodes. No idea what that was. Mm -hmm. So I started to read about him because back in those days, you didn't have Google. <laughs> if the, your school had yeah. uh, internet, it was like, wow, that's a good school. Yeah. So um, I was reading about him in the books and magazines. And I thought it was pretty cool that he played with Darcy Osborne and he played Crazy Train. I didn't know that that was him. Well. Yeah, and then I heard that he died. A very horrible uh, death, uh, you know, with the plane crash. Which I've actually, this is incredible, by accident, by coincidence, mm. I've actually been there on the site where he got killed. What the hell? Yeah, I, um, we, it was the end of the tour, I was going to visit some friends in Florida. And uh, the bus driver said, well, you know, I have a garage and we're going to stay there. And that's not so far from Florida. Mm -hmm. So, well, the place in Florida where I was going. So if you want, you can come with me, sleep in the bus. And then tomorrow morning they can come and pick you up. Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. So I was all alone in, in, in the bus. And then I woke up and I got he gave me some breakfast and he showed me around. It's a huge ranch where they, make, uh, they grow palm trees. And it's like, yeah, so and that well, over there is a building where that millionaire uh, used to live. That house was built by Joe Biden, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And that's the place where Randy Rhodes killed. And I was like, dude, wait, what? Randy Rhodes? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we took out a small golf cart. We drove there. <laughs> and there's these two lions there okay. uh, that they put up as a memory of Randy Rhodes. Because yeah. between those two lions, that's where the plane crashed. Goodness. Yeah, so I oh, started sorry. to Google uh, some pictures and it's like... Holy crap, Aru. Yeah. It's actually here. It's actually here. Yeah, and I had no idea. It's like, what What are the odds that yeah. I would end up here? Yeah. It's incredible. It's really incredible. Yeah, really. I mean, <laughs> goodness. Yeah. Talking about destiny and stuff. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's so weird. It's very weird. Yeah. Mola Chuck. Do you still have any photos of the Sweden Rock Festival 2005? Yes, somewhere at home in my storage. I have some photos. Still have I still have them, yeah. And there is actually, uh, I mean, of course, besides the fact that, you know, my inspiration when it comes to singing was Sebastian Bach, and I got one photo, he pointing at my camera. Really? And it's like, wow. Wow. That was, you know, surreal. I, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Unfortunately, someone was walking by, the passing by the camera, so you only see this, you yeah, know, okay. you, you, you don't see his mouth, you only see his eyes and the camera. Like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah you, see, you see like this, <laughs> but still you can see it's Sebastian Bach looking at my oh, camera and I was like, I remember when I took the picture, it's like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it was so cool. And also, of course, I uh, met the guys from Sabaton and I huh? got a, yes, and I got a picture with them. And uh, Joachim was, I remember he was like, hey, super happy. <laughs> and uh, Per and uh, Daniel was not in the picture, the former keyboard player. Uh, but the other guys were in the picture, uh, so that uh, that's pretty cool. Seventeen year old, seventeen year old yeah. Tommy posing with the with a band that was at that point like, wow, this is one of my new favorite bands. Yeah. And then uh, I don't know, twenty years later, no, fifteen years later, I would join them. You rock with them. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. Yeah. yeah. This is Tommy from Sabaton. You're watching Mulachuk, the only TV you need. Mula